I'm Phil with Alpha Bow Hunting, and this is our new show, To the Point. Welcome back. Um, this will be our fourth topic episode, whatever you want to call it. Again, we're going to do this in one take because I still got I, the green shirts on. We still got our green shirts. I'm just going to wear a green shirt every time. I miss the memo. Got, I mean, oh, green shirt, red hat. This is this is my show shirt. You know, I'm that's your attire. <laughs> So we're gonna make up and change, and we'll be good to go. We're gonna switch it up a little bit here and get more into Alpha Bow Hunting Challenge and Alpha Bow Hunting uh, workshops, coaching, coaching and the workshops, yeah. and, and forecasting into winter 2018 and into the beginning of 2019. So, before we do that, let's kind of recap on what we did this year, right? Obviously, started the workshops early this year at the beginning of the year. We had hour-long workshops. We had all-day workshops. Um, we did some bow tuning stuff. We did yep. some one-on-one -on -one stuff with people, um, and we're going to continue that into the winter, fall winter of 2018 and into 2019. Um, so if, if you didn't know, we have I've basically most of the the content that we do in the all in the in-house workshops and the all-day workshops, I've recorded videos, short videos, recorded some of the webinars, put that in a package, and we do have online courses available as well. So if it's something that you live outside of Denver, out that too far to travel, and you're really interested in the information that we're, we're kicking out, go to alphabowhunting.com, click on the coaching tab, and you can see what we have to offer there in its entirety. With the exception, and I don't know by the time that this one airs, um, our new feature that we're going to be working into in the next year is the private coaching. So, um, it, again, full transparency. What what we what we did in, in our all-day workshop, the information really focused on one portion of our pyramid, the, the middle portion, kind of the meat and potatoes of what our philosophy type yeah, you know right. structure is in, in, entails. Now, you take a step back and you get more into the understanding the equipment, shot sequence. You get into we get into some of the mindset. Of, of the shot, target panic, that kind of thing. And then on the top of the pyramid, we get more into the, the specific topic, situational bow hunting is what we called it. Even after that all day workshop we did, which I felt, again, it focused on the, the meat and potatoes and, and, and not trying to scratch our own back, but I had a ton of great feedback. I don't know if, if you guys had the yep, same, yep. but people still almost wanted to be more engaged. They wanted more, right? They wanted, um, which is great to see it, 100% great and see. we want to be able to help more with that so I think what we're gonna do is continue with the all-day workshops but and continue with the online courses however because we're gonna continue to evolve those online courses and I'm gonna try to make them more affordable uh, for someone to purchase outside because I think the thing that really helps is when somebody can walk you through the system step by step. If there's a portion of it that you grasp and you understand 100%, move on to the next. Right. If that yeah. next portion is not as easy to comprehend, we'll spend, spend some, some more time, time on it, it, right? Yeah. So what we're going to be working it, working on is having a coaching, a one-on-one -on -one coaching add-on package. If somebody's interested in buying the pyramid, the coaching structure, right now there's over 10 hours of video content on that entire pyramid, okay? And it, we we've got a ton of information there but because there's so much information what I decided to do was uh, offer a package with one of the three of us to where it's you're gonna get five 30 minute Skype sessions if you want to get the one-on-one -on -one additional coaching right so plus an intro session so what the intro session will be is I'll probably take the lead on most of the intro sessions sit down with you questionnaire try to find out where you're at what you're looking to get out of it what you need the most help with and whether it's myself or Braden or Bo that then you then continue the next five sessions with and it may be a combination of of us because you may say hey I have got a lot of tuning broadhead tech questions and I might say okay well we're gonna break out a couple of those sessions I'm gonna have you work with Bo and then you might have a ton of gear questions or or specific situational bow hunting question that we get into the the 4.0 offering and I might pass you to Braden or we may all kind of still they may be a couple of us that double dip in that and help out so it's gonna be a new offering this year that we're gonna offer starting in the winter time uh, obviously those sessions will be 
scheduled with the, the person, the student, and, and the instructor, if you want to call it that, from, from our, our aspect. And, and again, it's going to be a private Skype session. If you live in the metro area, the Denver metro area, and you want to come in for that 30-minute session, you can do it you know, face-to-face in-house. In so just that's, that's a uh, new offering. Um, again, the workshops are going to continue. They're going to continue to evolve. I'm going to probably keep the pyramid structure pretty consistent where it's at, but we're just going to add to it. Right? Yeah. We're going to add to the individual components little things and little topics. So moving on from that, tournament series, right? We had uh, a couple more. We went to South Dakota. Yep. We went to Utah. We had a great finals this year. We had uh, you know 120 plus shooters at our finals. We were able to give away over thirty thousand dollars in cash and prizes this year. So we gave away a ton of stuff. Thank you to all the partners that contributed product, time, um, you know, social yeah. media support. That's huge. And and even you know the the, the crew that we had come in, Trevin and the, and the yeah, crew that yeah. came in and, and recorded. Yeah. They did a great job. So yeah. thanks for the participants too for making it what it is too. Right. Right. Oh, uh, and we're going to hope sure. to continue in that format and add to it. So, uh, you know, new new for 2019, uh, we're going to add a team event to the, 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 the challenge course, the Alpha Challenge uh, days or weekends events. And the way that initially that we're, we're looking to do that is you're still going to have your individual division to compete in. And then in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon, we're going to be able to include a team shoot off uh, a two person team team event yep. that's going to entail um, probably a men's men's team women's team and a co-ed we're not going to break it down into ages, ages from there or anything like that it's just going to be three team options uh, there will be prizes for that there will be a small bump on your entry fee if you want to do the team event um, all that will be in the registration but it's it's exciting because <clears throat> No, it's not going to be the two teammates running the total course and changing for time. No, what we've kind of worked through is more of a uh, one team is actually working through and taking turns on the targets, right. uh, having to move through the course. You have to decide strategy-wise which teammate's going to take initially three shots, the other one's going to take two shots, but you're still going to have a mulligan only on your last arrow. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, potentially, both shooters could shoot three times. Right. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's still very similar to what we're doing format-wise. It's going to be on the same course. It's just going to be slightly different in how it's ran. We go yeah. back to adaptation, right? We're, we're yep. growing, and, and we, th we saw an opportunity to, to include something that uh, I think people are going to like a lot, that, that team thing or a partner thing, any, yep. whatever you want to call it, where you know, it, it, it's it's a yeah. lot of fun. So yeah. it, we, we kind of developed it when we were out of town. and it, well, Yeah, well, we were playing at some of the regional events. There was a little bit of downtime here and there. We were able to kind of try some stuff out. So I'm not sure yet it's going to be number of participants dependent whether we'll just pe allow people to do teams. Right now I'm thinking it's, it's going to continue as an individual event primarily, and the team event's going to be like an add-on, if you will. So really excited about that. Like I said, we yeah. had fun, Braden and I, Trevin, Nate, Bo didn't get a chance to do it with us at Utah, but we've talked about it. We've actually kind of went over some of the stuff. So yep. it's going to be exciting for next year. In addition to that, we're starting out the 2019 year early. We're going to be doing our first indoor event at the Denver International Sportsman's Expo in January. Yep. And the dates for that are January 10th through the 13th. The actual event that we're going to be doing um, will culminate Saturday afternoon evening of the ISE so the shoot off qualifying rounds will be Thursday Friday Saturday morning yeah. and then we're gonna do our shoot off rounds Saturday evening it will be like I said indoor it's not gonna be as much running like what, what you see on some of the videos <coughs> slightly condensed a little modification a little variation <coughs> um, still gonna be fun we may actually do a an indoor kind of uh, tune-up round here at No Limits leading up to that just so people can kind of learn the format a little uh, difference in format and and just get you ready so you know that tournament series is really designed to help put you in a high pressure situation and hopefully there's some similarity to what you experience in the field we all feel that way yeah. i mean bo you you did very well this year Braden Braden didn't compete i kept him working 
But I, I'm gonna, I that, might, I'm gonna blame it on that. No, I'm gonna, that was it. It was that situation, you know. And well, <laughs> went there, went there. I, I missed too, to man. So I gotta unleash. I gotta unleash myself. We might have to create a team, you and I, and at least play in the team at event. Least play, so right? there may be something there that we uh, <laughs> we try to put our name in the hat too. But um, practicing in a high pressure situation yeah. is yeah. super critical. I, yeah. I, Hard to replicate. It's you can't you can't know? replicate it, but you can you can try. And and even doing it in a head to head format, it almost. It almost adds a level of, I mean, you could be shooting at a target at 15 yards. It doesn't matter. You're competing against somebody. Mm -hmm. You drive your heart rate up just enough. It's exciting, yeah. and it's not easy. Man, I had I had a couple, you know, well, this last year, a couple events, you know, that I did participate in. I had a couple absolutely phenomenal runs. Uh, I remember it was one run in South Dakota. It was under two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, for me, is smoking fast. Now there's a couple other guys that hear that. Probably smoke me there, but <laughs> um, but no, I had a couple of awesome runs, and then um, here at the finals, man, I I just had some brain farts, stuff that I haven't like specifically with my shot execution that I hadn't done in years, that I got my heart rate up and I got my like started thinking too much, and wow, but, but it, how how much does that parallel what you sometimes see in the field? I mean, oh, it, per, perfect situation. I missed on a deer this year, right? That sixty eight. 68 yards or 72 72, 72 72 yards and my driver pin my bottom pin is set at 60 when i ranged him he was walking off the bench yeah and i didn't have time to move my driver i knew more or less my pin gap from 60 to where 70 would be i knew kind of hold yeah, the level. Hold. drew back got on him and he was slightly quartering away put my pin where i thought it needed to be but i didn't bubble up as well as I should. And as steep as that hillside was, yeah. that arrow, my bow just was slightly canted right. And as soon as that buck took another step and it started walking off that, my arrow just just missed into the right, barely. Yeah. But it was it was those things that you, well, m me looking at my level is part of my shot sequence and what I do every time I shoot my but, bow. But I think in that particular scenario with the buck walking away and a time restraint in your That's head. That's the thing. You were just. You know, the, that one thing that you normally always pick apart on your shot execution, something that you do, That's right. you skipped it because you thought about the time. Well, it's, and I rushed it in my shot, and, and I knew that if I didn't get that shot off, I wasn't going to get a shot off. Yeah. But at the same token, it's not an excuse, right? It's not, it's not a good excuse, I should say. So that, that raised heart rate, that high-pressure situation... We know it's not hunting what we do in the alpha bow hunting challenge. We, you can be great at an alpha bow hunting challenge and not kill anything, right? Right. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. You, you know, you can be terrible at the alpha bow hunting challenge and kill everything. So it, mm -hmm. it's just, but it's it's as close as we've been able to kind of put together to put you in a high pressure situation. You get the benefit of that. You get the benefit of that clouded, clouded head yeah. when you're shooting your bow. Um, that we all experience, and we some of us experience. Some some people they just have ice enough ice, ice in their veins where it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I get excited. I'm not. I mean, I've been able to shoot well in, in tournaments and high pressure situations, yeah. but at the same time, I still get excited. Yeah, oh, you know? of course. And I miss. If you don't get excited, it's not worth doing. It. Well, and that's where I think <laughs> I think we just get so so uh, eager for the season because of that. We know what could potentially be the pinnacle of that excitement level yeah. at that moment of truth. Right. That we, Sli slight that adrenaline high, junkies kind of thing. Yeah. We, yeah, I'm a slight <laughs> adrenaline junkie with my two feet on the ground. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say I'm not going to jump out of the plane. <laughs> no. So, but that's that's going to be exciting for next year. Yeah. Partnership-wise, you know, we're still looking to up the ante, right? That's something that, um, you know, I got to throw a shout-out to Total Archery Challenge. They invited us to a couple of, it, of their venues in 2000, this year, 2018. Uh, I'm in talks with them again for next year to see what we can try to put together. And there may be actually something even new that, that we throw out there to partner with them um, if, if it works out. So there's still a lot of things on the table. There's some new venues that we're considering. And as we have more uh, confirmed information on that, we'll release our schedule. Hoping to release our schedule here first, um, you know, probably mid-November. Worst case, by the 1st of December, you're going to know. But the one that is on the books, and you can start – Marking on your calendar and getting ready for is that Denver ISC show January 10th through the 13th. So that event is something we've, it's been a staple for us, you know. Yeah, I think we've as missed a it shop, as right? a shop. Yeah, yeah since 2009 yeah. that we opened, <clears throat> I think I've missed it one year. Yeah. And 
Uh, we've had a great relationship with, with <coughs> excuse me, the, 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 Denver, uh, the Denver International Sportsman's Expo and, and the people that, that work there. And we're excited to go back there because it's, it's mainly our customers, our local customers, that we get to interact with a lot of times. Yep. People put, the, put their bows away, some of them, after the season. And, but we get to catch up. Right. So looking forward to that as well. Um, what, what's your guys' thoughts? What's your take overall just kind of closing this, this segment up on the season that was the tournament season? It was good, man. I, I, it was busy. It was new. It was, I mean, this, this whole, the whole tournament series and the challenge and even, even the seminars and the educational portion is always ever evolving, adapting, right. changing. It's, it's so, it's still in such its infancy and has so right. much potential that, you know, I watched, we watched, we talked about it and we, you know, we talked a lot about it, but we watched even just the individual event grow as far as from a challenge standpoint, changing, changing, simple thing, changing, knocking out the center of those holes and, and changing a scoring system for a finals to add, add a little bit something different, sure. you know, that's an evolution. So to, to see what's going to come and what we saw uh, in that evolution, the team or the, the partner team event is going to be, be, be awesome. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for what's to come and what, what we've learned so far. And there's so. some stuff that you guys don't even know yet that I haven't told you about. <laughs> secrets, so, man. Secrets. It's, secret. it's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that we do everything right, but we're going to keep doing it until <laughs> we keep figure doing it out. <laughs> keep throwing it at the wall until it sticks. That's, that's it. Sure. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close out this one. You know, I mean, that's we wanted to really focus on, like I said, the alpha, what we have coming up from the, from the workshop side and the tournament side because it's something that we're all passionate about and we've put a lot of time and energy into and we're excited to be able to work with people and help people and learn from people to be quite honest because that's one of the biggest things you know as I lead into the, the all day workshop is focus I highlight that we've been able to learn from all the customers that come in the door you know we hear their stories we hear their experiences their their successes and their hardships and we've taken little nuggets from them, and we've kind of just mashed it into our own toolbox, right? right. And you mentioned the toolbox before, and and then we're able to try to test things out and quantify it. And that's I think that's one of the biggest things that the Alpha system, specifically the 3.0 and 4.0 portion of the class and the pyramid, is able to quantify some things. And you say like like specifically knowing your effective range. Okay, well most people think it's a paper plate and you shoot three out of four arrows or whatever distance and it's it is what it is it sticks yeah well we've taken a totally different approach to that determining your effective range and quantifying it and not even just on a on a on its face level right it, we want to we want to know in every situation in every shot position we want to know in different shot scenarios how does animal behavior come into that and have those questions answered mm -hmm. So if you want to learn more about that stuff, like I said, check out alphabowhunting.com. Um, if you're new to watching some of these episodes and you're enjoying what you're seeing, we've got a, a ton more to come. We're going to start getting into the new products of 2019 uh, in addition to uh, playing with some of them. You know, <clears throat> Last year we did a little quick teaser as far as some of the performance on some of the bows. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to get into some initial reviews. Or I mean... I'd like to get a little deeper into some yep. of those bow reviews, you know, whether it be a speed test like we did before. Um, there, there's so much that we do, yeah, but cool. but bow, and I don't want to cut you off, but it's it's something that we've we've mentioned it before. The the flow of and the seasons of the pro shop that that is here at No Limits Archery, the home of the Alpha Bow Hunting Challenge. We want to showcase that. We want we yeah. want to be able to basically put that camera on the wall, and as some of our conversations unfold with some of the new gear yeah. good or bad um, as we're bringing it out of the box and testing it we want to be able to bring you our our uh, our, our real response first time impression it's, it's it. you know yeah. and not not to mention sometimes the first impression changes after a little while right oh, yeah, so our, our opinion of course um, so you know we've talked about the broadhead stuff before you know Braden's got some some uh, kind of change of heart with certain things he's trying to go in a different direction with broadheads and i'm excited as well with the broadheads of braden shooting because i'm going to play with some of them they're new we haven't talked about them yet you know nope. <coughs> but nope, we're I hoping to mess with them some myself um so there's a lot of there's a lot of good features we like on some of the new stuff we're testing 
in addition to some of the the new companies we're working with you know and and um, being able to bring in the whole the whole thing the whole package it's 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 a I won't say it's a lifestyle because it's it's not a lifestyle but it's something we're all very serious and passionate about that we include into our lifestyle yeah. and that that some of us mold our lifestyle around this bow hunting kind of uh, a passion a sport activity whatever you want to title it but uh, we're excited to bring you more so thanks for checking out this episode of to the point and uh we'll see you guys next time see you